I cannot rest when uh, my own family or my own community or my country has people that are poor and are living in decent lives. And so really to be here talking about no one left behind uh, and everyone having decent employment is, is, is critical. When you talk about leave no one behind, um, how does that resonate with you? What does this mean to you? For me, inclusion is to be part of uh, making sure that everybody has access to, to basic services. That kind of growth must increase opportunities. To me, other people, the others, is what inclusion is about. We cannot continue to pretend that everyone's going to get into formal employment. The scope of the problem is this. You have 300 graduates every year coming to the job market. Of 20,000 fabricators are needed uh, to help in the oil and gas sector. In Uganda, there's only about 200 skilled fabricators. They need 10 to 20,000. If I've looked at the government intervention like Bitvet skilling in Uganda, they are doing uh, skilling in joinery, carpentry, uh, you know, bricklaying. Yet, uh, the future jobs report is saying by 2020, uh, the jobs uh, that will be available will be in robotics, nanotechnology, uh, 3D printing, artificial intelligence. What is the point of the government? What are the institutional mechanisms you will put in place to actually address the problem? For many young people, when you talk about political leadership and representation, we make 70% of the population. We should be a majority. We shouldn't be limited to the, mi the minority that need a representation. We should be the ones representing. So I think maybe the conversation should be, how do we get the old people to retire so that we can have young people in position? Can we train people to replace these skill gaps? Why do we have Indians and Chinese coming here, not that I have any problem with them, but doing our jobs that our own people are staying on the streets? And if in a forum like this, we can identify a bankable business that just needs coaching, maybe they, they need coaching to know how to present, how do we get them prepared to go onto that world stage, present to potential investors, share their ideas, and possibly even put our hands in our pockets. for me that big elephant in the room uh, for Uganda is our productivity. We have a very, very low productivity. It's, uh, you know, going to a restaurant where there are seven waiters and, and there's only two people looking for service and it still takes you uh, an hour to get your meal. It's, uh, it's a border border stand where there's uh, nine guys napping on the bike and only one guy working. That's productivity. It seems to me we have encouraged more imitation than innovation. If you start a Rolex stall here and your neighbor sees it's doing very well, he might not think of starting a flower bakery or whatever it is to supply you eggs, a poultry farm, etc. He or she will also start a Rolex stall. So in the end, you create uh, competitive mechanisms rather than partnerships. These young people who are selling Rolex the vendors should not be a burden because they are creating jobs. We've also done a lot in terms of enrollment, but at the end of the day, what's the quality of that education? Um, just getting people to sit under you know, a tree and, and do ABC is fine, but at the end of the day, what, when they come out of that, what are they going to do? I still insist that once there is an enabling environment, I still insist that it's we to discover ourselves. I still insist that it's we to establish what you want to do. The greatest capital you can have is not the money. It's the idea, it's the plan you have that you want to execute. That's why when you come to Patrick for a loan, he'll always insist on a business proposal. Not just a business proposal, but a viable, feasible and bankable business proposal. Basing on the nature of our population, our priority can only be young people. It can only be education, it can be human capital development, it can only be um, discipline in terms of uh, what Diana was talking about, mentorship and peer-to-peer -peer education. 
to me it's much more about individual agency you having that sense of self-worth and idea about what it is that you want to do not all of us really should be ending up in universities whatever let's create opportunities for technical skilled jobs those are the real triggers of economic dividend that we'll need to reap. One of the things that would really make a difference would be to sort of start to pay for performance in the public sector by making it more efficient. So reward the high performers and punish the low performers. I think that the premise that, you know, uh, public sector delivery should always just be about following policies and following uh, whatever rules and regulations, we should move away from that because we need them to step up. But I'm talking about growth where there is a fundamental shift in allocation of resources within the economy from low productive sectors to high productive sectors and creating a more dynamic and diversified economy. Inclusive institutions include exclusive or extractive institutions exclude. So on top of what we are working, on top of the people, on top of the policies, etc., institutions to matter. In the spirit of inclusive growth and bringing more people into the sector, get more taxpayers, um, support SMEs so that it can get out of the shadows of the grey economy and start contributing and paying taxes. That's what's going to help us. It's a lifestyle. You either live it or leave it. There is no pretense about it. There is no thin line. You're either pro-equality, you're either pro-inclusion uh, or against it. Uganda needs to save more. We need to mobilize domestic savings and channel it into these longer term uh, gestation projects. We do not save enough. Um, we need to to grow that. We need a development bank that is fit for purpose that can step in and help where commercial banks don't step in. Putting youth at the center of making pro-youth policies is important. It is extremely important. The tide is changing um, and there are many of us who have a voice and must use it to amplify the voices of many that don't have it so that we extend the same to others through mentorship, through forums such as this and just being an advocate for, for equality for everyone. I think Leo Africa has vindicated my thoughts. It's uh, renewed my hope that we too can shape the agenda onto and add onto the streams of knowledge. So a theme that came out very strongly throughout the whole day, all of our discussions, is that Uganda and East Africa has the necessary physical, financial, and human resources to reach its own development goals by 2030. We also learned that the youth here are amongst the most optimistic in the world.